Tesla makes some very fun cars, and a big piece of their cars is software. While Tesla's UI is very good, there are tons of little hidden things within software and around the car itself that owners may not know at first glance. Today, I'm going to break down all the tips and tricks to know for your Tesla, so let's get into it. First tip here is for those of you who don't yet have a Tesla and are looking to buy one, definitely make sure to use someone's referral code when you are buying a Tesla. Right now you'll get a year of free premium connectivity, which is a value of about $100, along with a three month trial of full self driving. Mine is linked in the description below, but you can use anyone's Tesla referral link and it gets the same deal. Now there are some things we'll talk about with the car physically itself, but a lot of tips and tricks come with software because most of what you do in a Tesla is controlled on screen. The UI is very good, but it is a lot of stuff packed into a 15 inch display, so there can be a lot to learn there. Most of the time, this is what your display is gonna look like. On the left side, it's your vehicle controls, and then once you go into drive, those actually change into your full self-driving visualizations or just standard autopilot visualizations. And then this two thirds of the screen is your maps. If you bring up anything else, it's gonna cover up your maps. So I bring up title, bring up Apple Music, bring up my rear cameras, bring up my general settings, all that covers maps. And then if you wanna close it, you can either drag down from there or you can just tap it again. One thing Tesla changed about a year or so ago is with how audio is handled on screen. So there's this card at the bottom left that's pretty much always there. And it's nice because those options for music are always there no matter what app you're using. So even if I'm over here, this stays here and I can play, go to the next track, previous track, like the song, but you can also drag this up and then you can see what's next on the album. You can see recents, favorites, and then sources. Sources is a little bit redundant if you have things in the dock, but it's not redundant if you don't have those options in the dock, and we'll get there in a second. The other options here are shuffle, repeat, then your EQ settings, which gives you all your audio settings, as well as the balance, so you can move where the speakers are actually aimed at in the vehicle. General options like this, and then your sources here is where you actually determine what sources will actually show up in music. This is something that's nice to customize because when you go to all of your apps here, you're not actually gonna need all of these things if you don't have them. So for me, I don't use Spotify. So I have that unchecked here. If you don't use Tidal or Apple Music or any of these other things, you can uncheck them and then you won't have those extra icons all the time for apps that you're never gonna actually use. Last here, you can click the search button and that brings you to your normal music search that is totally available in the normal music app itself. So this is Tidal and all the music apps are designed by Tesla. So they're all very similar, even though it's Tidal, Apple Music or Spotify, they all pretty much work in the same way. Right here, this is Tidal. I can go home and scroll around and see all the main stuff. My collection, Explore. There's downloads for Tidal, which I think is something exclusive to Tidal, which is kind of nice because you can download in Hi-Fi. And then if you get somewhere where there's no cell reception, you still have that music and it's playing full quality, not just streaming. But again, there's that search right there. I will say this search is a little bit finicky, but you do get used to it. As an example here, let's open Apple Music. You can see it's a little bit different on the home screen, but in general, this pretty much looks the same. Listen now, library, browse, radio, and then a nice thing about Apple Music is you can just click back to get to whatever page you were on last. In Tidal, if you're scrolling around and clicking into something, it's right here. But Apple Music, you can actually go back and then forward. But another thing that's interesting about this card that applies for any audio that you're playing in the car is that if you close it, swiping it down, it actually populates up on the top of the Music app. Then if you close the Music app, you have nothing there. So this is a little bit of a cleaner look. But then that little card lives with this icon temporarily. So you tap that and now it's back and you see the icon has disappeared. If I drag it down, there it is. One fairly new app for Tesla is Apple Podcasts. And so this just syncs with your Apple Podcasts app if you have that on your phone, which is pretty nice. As with all these apps, as I was mentioning, there are kind of a few ways to get to all the different sources. So you can swipe up on this card here, go to sources and switch between them there. Or you can tap on this title icon and switch between them there. Or you can tap into all of your apps in the dock and they're all there as well. One last thing to mention for this card is that there's three little dots right here. And that's because there's three cards. So there's the music one first, then there's your odometer, and then there's your tire pressure. And again, those are all things you can check elsewhere. I usually just go right here and then go to service to see my tire pressure. If you're the driver, most of the time you're probably going to be handling volume by the scroll wheel by going up and down on the left scroll wheel on the steering wheel. But if you quickly need to turn it down and you're already using the screen or something, you can just tap here and then swipe all the way. And that's how that works. So you don't have to sit here and tap, 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 tap. You can actually just swipe down here. Same with the bar itself. And then right there, you're probably recognizing that that's your audio settings. 
So if you quickly need to get to audio settings, you tap and there you are. The same applies for climate as well. So right here is your temperature. I have it 68 right now. I can tap that and then swipe and I can go all the way high or tap that and swipe, go all the way down. And that brings us to climate controls. The first tip there is that if you want to just turn it off entirely, you can just tap and hold here. You don't even have to open it. Now it's off. And as you can see, it's kind of grayed out there to represent that. Tap and hold again, and we're back. Alternatively, you open climate and press the power right there. But usually this is just a little bit faster. I personally like keeping climate in auto all the time, and then I just turn down the temperature and it figures it out. I also have my settings for the vents set to my driver profile, so my vents are pretty much never something I'm moving. But you can, of course, move them here if you need. This has everything else that people are used to seeing. Heated steering wheel and such, but one thing people don't often know about is that when it's in auto, you can still turn up the vents. So it's on low, and I can go to medium or high. And that allows you to somewhat customize the auto controls if you really just want more airflow, but it's not doing it. You don't always have to turn down the temperature. You can actually just turn it up to high. And then of course, now the Model Y, Model S and X all have bioweapon defense mode. You press that and this actually pressurizes the cabin and it's gonna get a lot louder in here with all the vents. There are certain areas of the country where it smells incredibly bad when you're going down the freeway somewhere. This happens with cows in California. So I like to turn that on and it actually works incredibly well. If you get it on in advance and pass the cow farm, you don't smell any of that manure smell because this does such a good job. And then of course it will actually help in smoke or other times when there's actually problems in the air. Then over on the right here, once you go into park, these options come up for keep, dog, and camp, and I love these because if you're going into the grocery store really quick, you just press keep, and it will keep your temperature exactly as it is. One setting that's a little bit buried in the menus is mirror settings. Now, a lot of times people would tend to think it would be in one of these main menus, but it's actually just under mirrors. So you go to controls, mirrors, and then you tap that, and then you have your mirror settings for things like auto fold, auto tilt, and auto dim. That's of course also how you adjust the positioning of them. This next tip is something that's actually fairly new, and it's for people that don't always wanna be interfacing with the screen. Tesla has added some more options to the scroll wheels that already exist. So the right scroll wheel is always dedicated to autopilot. You scroll up to go one mile an hour at a time, or you flick up to go five miles per hour at a time, and same for going down. Then right and left adjust your following distance and pressing engages a voice command and that never changes. However, the left scroll wheel is usually dedicated to media. You press it to play and pause. You go next or previous track and then you can scroll up or down for volume. But now if you press and hold, all of these other options come up on screen and you can see here, I already have it configured for dome lights, but if you click left here, it goes to the menu and there's tons of options that you can make this kind of secondary scroll wheel option. So you can adjust temperature, fan speed, wiper speed, brightness, save dash cam, acceleration modes, steering wheel heat, camera, defrost, dome lights, open glove box. So if you're driving and you want to open up your rear cameras but you don't want to interface with the screen, now I can just press and hold this and they come up automatically. And also I can scroll down to close as well. It shows these options pretty clearly or I can just press and hold and it's going to close as well. That one's a pretty basic one, but again, I can change this at any time by pressing and holding and clicking left. I go to this menu. Let's say I want to change my brightness of the screen. So you scroll and you get all of these different options all the way up to 100. Something like that is actually a lot more useful to adjust rather than going over to display and then swiping here. Sometimes it's nice to just be able to press and hold and then you're scrolling like this. In the front doors of a Model 3 or Y, this is how you open it by pressing this button, but there's also these backup releases right here in case the car were to lose power. However, in the back seat, you'll only see this, and then when you look down here, there's no manual release. That's because it's actually hidden in the door pocket right here. You lift this out, and then there's this little red tab right there. You pull that, and then within that is another thing that you pull, and then this releases the door manually. Definitely something that's good to know in case of emergency. When closing the front trunk of a Tesla, always be gentle, and it's usually two clicks. Another tip to know offhand if you ever have any issues with the software in your car is that you can reset the infotainment system and it's all separate from the driving. So right now I've been having issues, title wasn't loading. I was going around to apps and things were just 
really slow. It just keeps circling. It doesn't actually load it. And then if I go here, I do have signal, so I'm not sure what's happening. I can even be in drive while doing this. And then all you do is press and hold the two scroll wheels until you see the screen go blank and then a Tesla logo pops up on screen. And that's totally restarting the infotainment system. But again, you can still drive totally fine. So you can do this while driving if the screen were to freeze. Just both scroll wheels at the same time. I'll press and hold. So this is a soft reset. And again, I can drive totally fine. And there we go, the Tesla logo is coming up. So the whole system is restarting. Now that's considered a soft reset. So if you need a more involved one, there is a hard reset. And the only difference is you add the brake pedal into that. So you press and hold both scroll wheels and the brake pedal and it restarts. And that does a hard reset. Needless to say, you can't do that while driving. With normal basic autopilot that is included with every single Tesla today, there are a couple new options here. And the first is that you can do single or double pull to activate it. So essentially single pull just means you're only ever gonna go into autopilot and out of autopilot. There's not like two levels to it. So if I do double pull, one pull puts me into traffic aware cruise control and I'm still doing all of the steering right here versus then I do two pulls and then I'm fully in auto steer where it's driving for me and steering for me. And then I can of course exit this whole thing by pressing the brake or if I was already in there, I can exit it by going up on the stock. But the other way that you can exit it is by steering out of it. This can sometimes be a little bit confusing for people, but if I don't like how much it's turning over here, I can just steer out of it. And now I've exited auto steer, but I've not exited traffic aware cruise control. It's still gonna be cruising along for me. So that's important to remember that if you're using double pull, and auto steer, and you steer out of auto steer, it's still gonna stay in traffic aware cruise control. And then to exit that, you go up on the stock or hit the brake. I personally only use autopilot fully if I'm gonna use it. So I like to go for single pull, and that just means one pull, and now we're in full auto steer. Same thing here, if I steer out of it, it's now exited all of auto steer, and there's no traffic aware cruise control happening anymore. Go back into it, press the brake, or up on the stock. One thing that can be kind of nice with double pull though, is if you're in it and you're in full auto steer like this, you need to make a lane change. There's no automatic lane change included unless you buy the enhanced autopilot or full self-driving package. So once you signal, it kind of recognizes that and steering out is a little less intense. So if you're in double pull here and then you signal, it's a lot easier to make the lane change. And then you can enter back into full autopilot. That's a situation where it's kind of nice that it continues being in traffic aware cruise control. But for me, I just keep it on single pull. If I'm gonna make a lane change, I fully exit autopilot, do it all myself, and then get back fully into autopilot. One other small thing for autopilot is that you adjust your speed up or down in increments with the scroll wheel. Or if you wanna go five miles an hour, you just flick. Under pedals and steering, a lot of this is pretty self-explanatory for the average customer. There's usually chill and then normal or chill and sport if you have an acceleration upgrade here. And chill is just going to not give you as much out of the pedal, which for some people is pretty nice. But one of the fairly newer options is apply brakes when regenerative braking is limited. And it gives you some pretty good info about this. But essentially, if you think about it, once you get to 100% charge in a Tesla battery, it can't do regenerative braking anymore because there's nowhere for that energy that it's regenerating to go. So most Tesla owners in a car like the Model Y are only gonna be charging up to 80% every day. If you have an LFP chemistry Model 3 standard range or overseas a Model Y that is that way, you'd be charging to 100% every day. So usually customers who are used to charging to 80% every day are shocked because all of a sudden once they charge their Model Y to 100%, regen is gone, one pedal driving is gone all of that is kind of out the window and you're back to having to use both pedals all the time but this setting changes that it basically just simulates regenerative braking by automatically applying the brakes so you get one pedal driving from 100 percent all the way down to zero it's really nice under autopilot settings you can turn on the green traffic light chime it'll just give you a nice little chime to ding at you once the light turns green i will say it's not 100 percent perfect so don't just take that and then go you actually should look at the signal as well, not totally trust the car and ensure that it is green because sometimes it gets confused with green arrows. Under locks is where you would assign a key to a driver profile. So you can see right here, I have this key and it says unknown key and it's not assigned to any driver profile that I have in my car. So I can just tap this icon right here and now it's assigned to mine because I was in mine at that time. So if you wanna assign it to a different driver profile, you just enter that driver profile 
and then assign the key. The function of this is that you get in the car with that key and then it's automatically using all of your settings. Under the safety settings on screen, you can definitely turn on sentry mode and one very good tip to do right off the bat if you're able to park safely at home is to exclude home. So it knows your home address that you've probably programmed into maps and once the car is there and you're safe, it will not use sentry mode and that's good to have because sentry mode does use up some of the battery. But if we scroll down here, we can turn on dash cam and have it on auto and then also on honk. So it's automatically gonna be taking clips when it thinks it needs it. And then when you honk the horn, it will automatically save a clip. Sometimes this drive will randomly get full though, and if you haven't had anything that you've needed to look at or save on that drive, you can delete all your dash cam clips or just format the USB drive which starts it from scratch. I just had to do this the other day, and sometimes it's good to keep the dash cam icon in the dock like this because it will clearly show you that it's not actually going to be available because that drive is full. So from time to time you may need to come to this safety menu and clear out the drive. Another option here is allow mobile access, and that is what allows you to stream your cameras to your phone app. Unless you turn it on in the car, it will not do it. Another thing that I think is fairly new here is an automatic 911 call, and you can have this on or off, but basically if the airbags deploy in the car, it's automatically gonna call 911 through a Bluetooth connected phone. Then one last thing here is Joe mode, and this essentially just reduces the volume of all the chimes in the car. Under the service menu, there's probably not a lot that you need to engage with day to day, but there is the owner's manual and then car wash mode. So here's what that looks like when you're actually at a car wash. So you tap car wash mode and it tells you that car wash mode closes all windows, locks the charge port door, disables the windshield wipers, sentry mode, walk away door locks and parking sensor chimes. And it'll exit car wash mode if the vehicle exceeds 10 miles per hour. So it will pretty much automatically exit it for you but you enter it, it gives you a green light to show that all of these things are locked. You can also turn on screen clean mode from here, which automatically makes it so you have no controls here, and then you hold to exit right here, it takes like four seconds. You can fold the mirrors, and then you can also enable free roll. Your foot does have to be on the brake, but then essentially this is entering neutral. The other way to enter neutral is the way that a lot of people do on accident at first, and that's just like a little baby half pressed down on the stock, and I'm into neutral. Now let's talk about maps. Maps is extremely useful in a Tesla, and for the most part, it's probably gonna be the maps that you're gonna use unless you're adding a phone. Overall, it's really good, but you may notice that there's not as many options as you may have thought right here, and the way to get those up is you just tap the middle of the screen, and now I have chargers. You can see all the superchargers in the area, which is really impressive. And it gives you some clear details here about all these chargers. It tells you how many are available at this given time, and then if you tap a charger like this one, it shows me six stalls available out of 16 stalls. It shows me the speed that they're at. And on top of that, it will tell you if there's any out of order stalls. I mean, these are all pretty good. There's not many out of order stalls I'm seeing, but I'm sure I can find one. Yeah, right here, it tells me out of order 1A and 1B. So if I pull up to that charger with 23 stalls available, I'll just note that I don't wanna pull into those. This card also will give you more information like what the pricing is at at any given time. And then it shows some photos of the charger itself and gives you a little icon of what amenities are nearby. The other options that pop up when you tap in the middle here are traffic and then satellite view if you want that instead. Now navigation works from point A to point B, but it also works from point A, B, C, D and everything in between if you want it to. So right here I'm going to navigate to Tito's Tacos in Culver City. So it's routing me directly there, but if I want to add more stops, I click these three dots and I can either add a stop or click edit trip. I usually just click edit trip because I like to see it this way and be able to add all my options and drag them around. So if I add another destination, there's that. And then I tap over here and I can swipe between these if I wanna change the order. Can even do some pretty insane driving here. Like I wanna to go to Irvine and then San Francisco and then Tito's Tacos, click done, and it's gonna calculate it and find the superchargers that I need for that trip. Within this, it gives you tons of information as well. Like I'll arrive at 15%, charge for 20 minutes, charge there for an hour, all that stuff. Within navigation, you can program home and work, and it'll figure out which one of those you're going to, depending on the time of day, and potentially using your location as well. So right now it knows that I'm gonna wanna head home. I swipe down here, and it's automatically navigating me home. It's pretty nice because you don't even have to tap in and then click home, or tap in and type in an address or anything. You just, bam, and you're good. A little tip for your phone audio when it's connected via Bluetooth, you go to the Bluetooth menu and you may look at this and think, okay, Ryan's 14 Pro, let me change settings there. Most UIs would make you think that an arrow would be clickable there, but it's actually not. If you need to change any settings from your own phone, you actually have to click pair new device and then it brings up the menu with all the phones and then I can turn everything off. And then I can change settings as needed, including priority device where it automatically connects to my phone first when getting into the car. While we're here, if you prefer to look at percentage versus mileage, you can just tap on that 
and go back and forth really as often as you want. Just keep in mind that this mileage prediction is a prediction and isn't always reflective of the real world. One other thing that's kind of exclusive to Tesla's at this point is auto turn signal canceling. This is located under light settings. So this is something you're probably used to in most vehicles, but it's really just done by once you turn the wheel back a certain amount, then it turns off the blinker for you. But here, as it describes, it actually turns off your turn signal after a merge, fork, or lane change has been completed. And it also recognizes if you're needing to do another one and it will keep it on. It's pretty nice to have because you just lane change and then your signal automatically turns off as opposed to needing to turn it off and back on yourself. Now when you go into park in a Tesla with stocks, you click once and you're into park, but if you press and hold, it actually goes further into park, so this would be good if you're parking on an incline or anything. Next are voice commands, and some people have mixed results with these, but overall I'd just say to experiment with them. You press on the right scroll wheel in a Model Y or in a refreshed Model 3, you press the voice commands dedicated button. And then you can have it do a lot of things throughout the car. Pretty much anything you can access in the menus, you could do a voice command for. Put temperature at 65. The four quick control options in the Tesla app are customizable. You press and hold on one of them, and it brings up the options, so you can drag to replace any icon that you want. Or if you take a fifth one and drag it all the way to the right, sometimes it's a little hard to land this, you can add a fifth one and then have five quick controls available to you at all times. Most importantly, fart can be that fifth control. It even adds that fifth icon that you've added to the Tesla widget. Under location, you're now able to navigate and plan out a whole trip with supercharging stops and all, and then send it to the car. Using your Maps app of choice, you can send this to your car by clicking Share and then tapping the Tesla app. And then under security and drivers, you can turn on the sentry mode cameras and live stream them to your vehicle. The automatic view brings up four cameras at once, but you can also check two other cameras from the car, as well as the interior camera. Charge stats gives you very detailed info about how much you're paying to charge and how much you're saving over gas. And then if you tap the three lines at the top, you get to more options, including refer and earn which shows you the referral program. If someone you know is buying a Tesla, give them your referral link and you'll get points that you can redeem for different things within the app. That's a ton of little tips and tricks for Tesla owners across the board. The interesting thing is that this video will hold up in the future, but in the future, there will surely be a lot more as Tesla keeps improving their app and in-vehicle software. It's an exciting part of owning a Tesla, but sometimes it's hard to truly know it all, so I hope this video was helpful for you. In the meantime, if you wanna see the latest Tesla news, you can check out that video linked up here or in the description below. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.